next week, my wife and I are moving to Southern California, north of Los Angeles, to be closer to family and friends. We grew up in California and left uh, more than 50 years ago. I will return to making videos after we are settled in a few months. They will blend old school hiking and camping with the newest video technology, including 360 degree cameras. In the 1960s, my twin Russell and I did not camp in tents or hammocks, but rather we slept directly on the ground, bivouac style. We wore heavy boots and canvas leggings to protect against uh, cactus thorns and rattlesnakes. I look forward to camping again this way because it's well suited to warm and dry climates. Stay tuned for future videos. I've attached one of my videos from a few years ago about adapting old school bivouac style camping to the 21st century. Enjoy. Until next time, peace. We are fortunate to live in the computer age where information is readily available. We can learn from the past with easy access to books and articles from any point in human history and share this knowledge through social media. It's so powerful. One of my hobbies is to learn how people survived and thrived with nature from the earliest recorded history to the present. My favorite period is the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. There was so much change there. Technology was beginning to take over. And in the later, latter part of the 1800s, uh, people could totally close them off, themselves off from nature and just experience technology. And so people had choices at that point in time. In previous episodes, of bedroll and haversack camping, I mostly quoted from the book How to Camp Out, and it was written by John Gould in 1877, and he provides advice as a Civil War veteran. This book was written for young people, and the, uh, the children, the people growing up, the kids growing up then, didn't really know how to connect with nature. They just knew city life. And so John wrote this book to help young people enjoy nature, enjoy tramping around in the wilderness. It's a really powerful book written for you know, the average person. In this episode, I'm going to also quote from another one of my favorite books written by Sir Francis Galton in 1872, The Art of Travel, Shifts and Contrivances Available in Wild Countries. Let's go hiking. Let's go.
This is a good place to set up camp. There isn't very much wind here. You can see from the leaves that are on the, on the sand, they're not blowing away. The vegetation is not too tall, and so it, it won't fall on me, but it's thick enough so that I, I won't get cold at night. It'll keep the heat in, and also, I will not be seen very easily in this spot because of the vegetation, and yet I can see around me in all sides. So this looks like it may be a perfect spot, but I'm going to check out some others and uh, we'll see what they look like too. Most of this area is pretty open, unless I were to actually get into the forest, but I want to sleep along the bank of the river because the sand is soft and it'll be quite comfortable. Now there's some good ones in here. Uh, as you can see again, the wind doesn't blow around too much because the leaves are left here. So those that's possible. But again, that's more open and I can be more easily seen from the outside. And so the, the other place might be a more a safer place to spend the night. See, this is the spot that I had selected from another angle, and it's really hard to see that I'm in there. My bags are in there, my water jug and everything, but you, you can't really see it very easily. Let's go around and see how this looks. Again, here's the open area. You know, I don't really want to be under that tree. Besides, trees are not very safe to stay under, and yet these bushes provide ideal uh, protection. And it's not too far from the water. It's above the water a ways. I shouldn't be disturbing that. And here I am. I go right in here. And I think this is where I bivouac. This is just right. It's so comfortable. In my haversack, an apple, a bowl, eating utensils. Beef jerky. My bow saw. Water bottle, water jug. Coffee pot. And my meal that's in here. Let's see what's in my blanket roll. I hold the blanket roll together with three belts that I attach to each other. One belt, second one, and that's the third belt. This is my rain gear. And I use that as a ground cloth 
It's a Macintosh. It's a modern-day Macintosh. In case I get cold. Extra socks. Tent pegs. My light for the night, a candle, claws, cordage. This is hemp, hemp cordage. I use these as grates over the fire. And then my blanket, I've lined with a sheet, and that was the height of luxury in the 1800s. And in the old days, they recommended buttoning the two together but I used safety pins instead. Okay, the first thing I need to do is to put the Macintosh, put the Macintosh, the rubber cloth, rubber sheet, down where I'm going to be sleeping. And that will keep any dampness from getting onto me.
the sun's going down, so it's time to hit the sack. It sure is pretty. I'm going to keep my little lantern going right here, so I'll have that night light for a while. And anyways, uh, sweet dreams. See you guys in the morning. Bivouacking is miserable work in a wet or unhealthy climate. But in a dry and healthy one, there may be no question of its superiority over tenting. Men who sleep habitually in the open breathe fresher air and are far more imbued with the spirit of wildlife than those who pass the night within the stuffy enclosure of a tent. It is an endless pleasure to lie half awake watching the stars above and the picturesque groupings of the encampment round about and to hear on all sides the stirrings of animal life. And there is no sound but of the wind and an occasional plaintive cry of wild animals. The traveler finds himself in that close communion with nature, which is the true charm of wild life. Now all of this pleasure is lost by sleeping in a tent. Tent life is semi-civilization and perpetuates its habits. This may be illustrated by a simple trait. A man who has lived much in bivouacs, if there be a night alarm, runs naturally into the dark for safety, just as a wild animal would. But a man who travels with tents becomes frightened when away from its lights or from the fancied security of its walls. In a dangerous country, there can be no comparison between the hazard of a tent and that of a bivouac. In the former, a man's sleep is heavy. He cannot hear nearly so well. He can see nothing, and his cattle may all decamp, while marauders know exactly where he is lying and they may make their plans accordingly. They may creep up unobserved and spear him through the canvas. Good morning, guys. Wow, I had this weird dream last night. Sir Francis Galton was talking to me about the advantages of camping like this over a tent. Wow. It was, it was comfortable. It didn't get very cold. I just put the uh, blanket over me maybe about halfway through the night and uh, it stayed really nice. Well, the sun's just getting up now, so I'll get up and enjoy the morning. <laughs> 